the show. And it seems like it was more a case of the clubs have agreed kind of to stay close-ish to each other in what they do, but the clubs have done vastly different things between each other, but most of them have ended up on a similar sort of scale of players paid less than 37 and a half grand a year will be on a certain percentage and then it might graduate up on, on the more higher paid players that will give up a bigger chunk of the salary up to on some clubs I think 50, 50% or so so um, so yeah uh, John any, any thoughts from you about first of all the players having to take a pay cut and, and second of all the idea of um, blacklisting any players who step out of line it's difficult, isn't it? Because you've, you've got to balance, you know, the the obligation of meeting those contracts, um, meeting those contracts that have been have been signed, and but also protecting the clubs and protecting the games. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't really have have the answer, but but I, I think blacklisting players certainly doesn't sit well with me, and I don't think it's in the within the spirit of the sport or anything like that. I think it's it's a really dodgy road to go down. Yeah, I mean, one thing, I mean, when we talk about fulfilling a contract, one of the, I would very much doubt whether it had, you know, these specific circumstances detailed within them. But, you know, I would expect that there's some minimum level of, of, of you know, playing um, <laughs> spe- kind of di- dictated within the contract. You know, usually the, there's usually break clauses linked to injuries and, and things like that. Probably not when you're, um, in the middle of a pandemic, but there, you know, there has to be a level of, you know, understanding on both sides in terms of you're not putting your body in harm's way, uh, certainly not at the moment. It, the situation will change, and it's, it's. It, I would hope that there will be a level of, you know, there's, there's two, sensibleness. There's two things around it. There's, there's, there's the what's the way out? Like once games are being played again, will these players be getting play, paid full play? pay well with talk of playing behind closed doors increasing i can't see how the clubs can afford to pay the players full pay once games back get back underway because actually like we spoke about last week they're probably able to afford to pay the players more under the government furlough scheme than they might be able to afford to pay the players under a situation where they're playing behind closed doors um and so i'd expect something to continue whilst that continued but the other side of that coin is actually rather than blacklisting the players it might actually give the players some some power here certainly the the top players because they will have done something to help protect their, those clubs and those sports and i know without the sport you could argue that they wouldn't be earning the, the contracts that they're all on but the players will be able to maybe demand some things back here after the end of this season's over you know if things can get close to anywhere near back to normal i would expect the players want to have a bigger say and we've heard so much more from the players union during this period than we've heard ever before i would say and their membership's been increasing as well uh, up to 80 over 80 percent now of the players are apparently part of the union which was certainly not the case uh, two months ago four months ago and a number of years ago when there was two unions that players could be a part of it definitely wasn't the case uh, so I, I would expect this blacklisting idea whilst i can understand where the cl- where the clubs and the sport are co- sort of coming from in terms of you can't be privileged to be part of our sport if you're not willing to support our sport during this tough time at, at the same time there'll be other players who'll be wanting to sort of say we're the product without without us you won't have the fans and we've taken a big decrease in our pay here during this period it's it's very complicated and gonna get political it feels yeah yeah there's no there's no easy solution to it the only thing you hope is that they that whenever you're into into any kind of discussion about it that you do it in in terms of it's it's the success or the, the survival of clubs and the, the continuation of, of, of play is in everyone's best interests. I suppose and... this is the um, part of the show to talk about with the with the idea of the everyone's best interest part, the relaxation of the minimum salary rule um, that's also been talked about, which re- relates to pay a, player wages, but also relates to the salary cap. So basically players would have to be paid um, a minimum of £15,000 in their uh salary to uh, 
been able to play in a Super League salary capped match, which I, I know loads of people have talked about a minimum wage for, for rugby league players for, for a while and maybe not realise this clause was necessarily in there uh, in, in the operational rules. We love a good operational rule on the Super League, yeah. but we're not going <laughs> to read it out while. in full. Um, but, but basically, this is kind of going to mean that some of the younger players in the back end of these squads, some of the reserve players who had just signed on reserves contracts, some of the under nine, under 18s players that had just signed on academy contract, contracts, ordinarily wouldn't be paid enough to be in the Super League side, but they might need to use these players in the in this season if it's going to be this condensed season with more games per week and things like that. You'd ex- or even if the other alternative that people have talked about that some players might go to the NRL on short term deals um, leaving the Super League clubs needing to scratch around their, the back end of their squad for some players that's something that's a changing picture now I, I would think that the players union again would be interested in if that's going to get relaxed in the short term how do we make sure that we see something that returns the favour to the players in the medium and longer term. Alan, what what do you think about relaxing that rule? It feels like you probably have to. At the moment, there are so many unanswered questions about the length of the season and the provision for, you know, the, the, we know some things about, you know, that there will be no uh, reserve season. So we know that those players would be kicking their heels otherwise if, if the season was to be, you know, if the, many of the yeah. games were to be cancelled. Um, you feel like there needs to be some kind of bones put on things before you can start to answer some of these questions. They need to sign to say, well, we're working to this an assumption of a 22-game league or a 20-game league or whatever. At that point, you can then say, well, you, you can knock things like short-term NRL contracts conversations out the window because you know you can start to say these things I would argue at at this point there needs to be some clear outlines of what they're working to other sports are starting to do this cycling has done it Formula One has done it and I I know these are global but the the NRL has done it haven't haven't they what's that sorry the NRL have done it as well, haven't they? So it, yeah, oh, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of spots have started to set out their approach or their p- a potential way forward, and at the moment we're still working in the fog. Are so, other sports in, in the UK? Sorry, Alan. Sorry, have other sports no, in the UK been able to put that forward then, or? Um. I so, think well, well, the Premier League and the Football League. It sounds like they're close to. Right. It's close to putting something together, but yeah, you're right. I, I don't think any of our sports have necessarily know, but, put together what they're going to do, have they? Yeah, Australia and New Zealand have been you know, have fed a lot better in in kind of number of cases and sort of number of deaths from the virus. So I think that, you know they're they're probably further ahead in the in, in the steps coming out of it than, than we are. Um, but I don't know what the um, what the, the the Premier League or the the, the union premiership or whatever are looking to do. No, no, exactly. Yeah, you, you are right. This, it, it goes back to that. No one knows what's going on. Um, yeah. Do you think it <laughs> yeah. would be nice for the for the Super League to be at the front of that queue in terms of the or the or rugby league in general at the front of that queue in terms of people who are going to say this is what we want to do and and what and I'll make that two part question to you, John. What do you think is realistic? I, th- I think absolutely, it'd be great for for rugby league to to lead the way. I think they, you know, kind of tried to keep going as other sports were shutting down, didn't we? Mm. And, and tried to be like the last one on telly and, and offered, you know, um, Sky Sports to to come to every match to to fill up their schedule and things like that to try and get as much exposure. Um, but I think the um, I think I think going forward, it, it's going to be really difficult because you know the, the safety of the players and the, and the the, uh, the crowds and everything have got to be got to be paramount, and it's all balancing with what social distancing measures come into force as you know lockdowns released or, or relaxed or whatever. And you know, then we're into how the clubs balance their their books if they can only have half the capacity. 
yeah. in, in the stadium or, you know, if they've got to have two seats in between each group, you know, and then <clears throat> then you're into cash flow uh, problems. And if, if you're, you're, you're not getting the, um, the the furlough benefit or anything like that to help pay your, your staff, then you know, we could be in a, in a worse problem than we are now. Yeah, it's it like, you know, there's people like uh, Neil Hodgell coming out giving sort of doomsday warnings and that you know every and then you've got Ralph Rimmer coming out being very confident that everything's going to be almost the, the same and everything's going to be completed it, it, it's somewhere between the two probably in reality but it is really yeah. uncertain isn't it so uh, maybe we should stop speculating and maybe we should just get into the factual and talk about some news from around the world yeah, like, what do we think? <laughs> <laughs> let's do that let's do it <laughs> So here we are, moving on to uh, the news and this week in coronavirus, unfortunately, a regular slot on the show now. Um, So on the 21st of April, it was announced, uh, to no one's surprise, at the Super League's Magic Weekend event uh, scheduled for the 23rd and 24th of May at Newcastle. Uh, has been postponed because of the ongoing lockdown. Uh, the league still hopes to revive the event once the game returns to action and, quote, all options are being considered. Um, shortly after the announcement, uh, Broadcaster Sky said they would uh, broadcast a number of classic Magic Weekend games over the weekend in place of live action. Um, in total, nine hours of games will be shown. Um, on Sky Sports Arena, which include Huddersfield Salford from 2012, Wigan Leeds from 2014, uh, Hull KR against Hull FC from 2012, uh, Castleford Wakefield again from 2012, St Helens versus Warrington from 2013, and Bradford versus Leeds from 2007. And how bloody dare they show that match? <laughs> how bloody dare they? They only need to show the last, like, well, of game time, the last three seconds of game time. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's, 2012's magic must have been fucking brilliant I barely remember it <laughs> well, I was going to say uh, how many beers in were you at that point that's the, that's the real question I wasn't at that magic weekend uh, I think actually do you know what magic weekend wasn't something I regularly attended until 2015 um, so yeah but I was definitely absolutely smashed for that Wigan Leeds game in 2014 was that the um, was that the Danny Maguire r- run around obstruction no try, or was that a different one? I can't remember, but I was smashed anyway when it was on. Yeah. I can't. It, it, it's not one that I particularly recall that year. No. Um, oh, I'm not no. sure. <laughs> I've, I've, I've tried to block him out after 2007 in many ways, but um, but anyway. <laughs> It'll be entertaining for some people. You can see uh, Steve Ganson's greatest, well, I'd say greatest shame, but, you know, he's had his moments, hasn't he? The whole KO Hall FC one wasn't the other one, was it? Was that the other one with the video ref? <sighs> or was that later? Later, It was definitely oh. one of the Manchester ones. I'm, I'm, I'm completely guessing. I'm, I'm guessing... guessing it was later than that. I think 2012 was back at Millennium Stadium, weren't it? Manchester was 13, 14, 15, yeah. Yeah. I'll believe you. I might be wrong. (laughs) I might be wrong. Um, And it was also announced uh, by the RFL that they are cancelling the 2020 Summer Ash. Um, It was due to take place um, at Blackpool, as it has in the previous few years, on the 30th and 31st of May. Um, the RFL said they've not totally abandoned the concept of playing a round of fixtures at a single venue in 2020. Um, supporters, such as myself, who have brought tickets, will be contacted about a refund or exchanging the tickets. Um, I haven't had anything yet, by the way. Um, while fans who bought tickets from clubs should contact the club about a refund. Well, if they're contacting you about tickets for another rugby league event, we don't know which ones are going to not be cancelled this year. It's basically going to end yeah, up everyone getting one, isn't it? I mean, to the Challenge Cup final if that goes ahead, because the Ashes yeah, look less likely. It is difficult. I mean, I, I mean, at the moment, I'm quite happy for them to hang on to the money, because they bloody need it. Um, um, and then we, I guess we'll see what happens, um, as you say, if if and when things get confirmed into the into the calendar. But but yeah, it's it's disappointing because it's a it's a good weekend. But... I hope Sky are going to show classic summer bash games on that weekend. 
as well as what they're doing for the Super League games the weekend before because there's been some classic Summer Bash games. 